Hello, this is Gene Fay, CEO of ThreadX. Uh, today we are going to do a webinar on credential stuffing. Uh, this is our first educational webinar. We're going to do a series of these. Uh, we picked credential stuffing because it's something that we're seeing quite a bit uh, from our customers. Uh, this webinar will be recorded, so anybody who doesn't uh, want to be a part of it should uh, jump off now. Uh, but we'll get started. Again, I'm Gene Fay, CEO of ThreadX, here with Brett Settle, our co-founder and chief strategy officer. Agenda for today, uh, we're going to talk about what credential stuffing is, uh, why is credential stuffing, how it's changing and how it's morphing in the market, and then how is ThreadX uh, uniquely uh, capable of solving this problem. Uh, we'll save the commercial to the end. Uh, the meat of this webinar is really about what's going on with credential stuffing and how we think uh, you can take different approaches uh, to being able to be able to solve this problem and ultimately stay ahead of the adversary. So Brett, you, you and I, we've been around for a while. We've been doing this uh, security thing for a long time. Uh, credential stuffing is one of those things that's definitely been around, but let's start with just you know, what it, what is it, just to remind people. Yeah, it's uh, it's seemingly a fairly simple attack. It's uh, attackers that are attempting to reuse credentials that were stolen in a prior breach. And, you know, in this day and age, you would assume that most people use different credentials for each application. They change the passwords frequently, but we all know that never happens, right? right. And in fact, these, these databases, I mean, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of credentials that have been compromised. And one of the unique things that I've noticed is in many cases, if you kind of monitor these lists, you'll notice that the curation is fantastic. I wish more companies could actually curate their customer data the way sure. that these guys are doing with these uh, credential stuffing lists. But when you start to introduce things like large botnet networks and some of the increased sophistication and how they approach this attack vector, it's becoming more and more difficult to use, you know, static signatures and some of the traditional tools to be able to stop these kinds of attacks. Absolutely, and that, that gets to kind of the big bigger part of what we're saying, right? These attacks are getting significantly more sophisticated uh, and traditional techniques that a lot of our clients were using prior to ThreadX uh, just simply aren't working anymore. So can you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, again, it's a combination of different techniques. So they're obviously using multiple IPs uh, to be able to kind of ramp up the number of attacks that they can use. They're often using anonymizing technologies. So whether it's a proxy service, a VPN or Tor exit node, but they're obviously trying to evade detection or identification of who they are. And what's been interesting of note is there are cheaper ways to do this. And then there are more expensive ways to do this. But we're seeing a migration from, you know, into some of the more residential proxy services today right. that even though it's slower and even though there are certain limitations there, it's just a way for them to grab another block of IPs that they can use as part of the attack. The other interesting point that we're seeing is in addition to that level of sophistication, huge amount of targeting for the APIs. Part of this is because, you know, in some cases, the APIs are not as well protected and therefore they can bypass a layer of security. Uh, in some cases, these APIs, it's just part of their overall design. They were meant to support aggregation services or multiple users, and therefore the ability to, you know, come up with a common detection mechanism gets that much harder because of the different users of the APIs. But by far the most uh, challenging issue with API detection is one of the key techniques that we like to use is some level of IP fingerprinting. Commonly, you want to be able to use some injection techniques and you can do so with a browser, but when you get into the API side of the house, there is no browser to inject. And so it's just one less tool that you have in the toolbox to be effectively identify these guys. Mm. No, absolutely. Makes sense. So you, know, you hit on some of these techniques, um, but I think that there's even you know, kind of a, a greater list of what we're seeing from uh, some of these unique uh, attacks. I know uh, we just, uh, we're happy to have our latest client, which is a major restaurant chain. And uh, I know they, they were having a lot of difficulty using a, a bot detection tool and a DDoS capability to try to figure out 
uh, what was ultimately credential stuffing. And it couldn't be figured out because each one of the tools, there was no way to kind of look at the overall world. And it, ultimately, what did we discover, right? It was a it was a bot det uh, attack disguised as a DDoS attack. And, and neither of the, the best, of, best of breed tools they were using uh, couldn't solve that problem. So you want to talk a little bit more about uh, kind of these different techniques that we're seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, just, I mean, very interesting attack uh, patterns that they were using. As you said, you know, initially they thought it was a, DOS, a DDoS attack. Uh, then they started to realize a high number of login failure attempts. And then as they continue to try to pattern those failure attempts, just the, the constant evolution uh, and avoiding. And again, this is typical of what we're seeing in this day and age. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is there is a lot of value for these attackers in the particular applications or group of applications that they're attacking. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's value and that value outweighs the amount of effort or the cost that they have to contribute uh, to try to exploit those applications and they're gonna keep hitting you, they're gonna keep avoiding, they're gonna continue to try different techniques and blended or parallel attacks. The key is obviously you've gotta be able to keep up with them. You gotta be able to identify it and you gotta make it very expensive. You gotta block enough of those IPs without impacting legitimate traffic uh, so that they, you know, continue to have to buy more and more blocks and move in different directions. And it's a bit of a whack-a-mole type of game, but the solution that you use or the combination of tools that you use has to be dynamic enough to be able to keep up with all these different variations. Absolutely. And you hit on a perfect point, which is, uh, I know it's one of one of our missions is, is just to make the, the attack expensive and, and, and make, cost them time. Um, so that we're not, you know, our clients are not the easy targets. Uh, and, and there are, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of opportunities for these guys to find softer targets. So if they're not having success with a particular client, they'll, they'll move on to other things. So a big part of uh, what people should be thinking about is how, how, can, we, how can you make that more expensive uh, for the attacker in time and well, effort? and things that they've got to go buy on the dark web uh, to make uh, the attack worthwhile. Uh, ultimately, you know, th these guys are unlimited time, un unlimited money, uh, but they're looking for the weakest link. So uh, you should, uh, as a CISO, as a director of uh, cyber, you should be thinking about that as uh, what can you do to make these attacks more expensive and, and more time consuming? So great, great point. But I think, you know, one of the things that the, the CISO said for that particular incident, but we hear it a lot, is just, it's the visibility angle. Right. You know, there was a lot going on. They had multiple tool sets that they were using. They were getting different inputs and different pieces of information. And yet they were having such a struggle to try to keep up. And a lot of it was simply down to the fact that they just didn't have the visibility to enough of the key components and indicators of what was really going on to be able to come up with a, a real strategy to attack the problem. Yeah, no, it makes makes total sense, and uh, we we hope that you know people can start to think about different ways to approach uh, credential stuffing uh, to again make it more expensive. Uh, so next, we'd like to just talk about you know how ThreadX is uniquely positioned here. So just a little bit of a commercial here, uh, just to educate uh, the viewer on some of the things and some of the unique approaches that. ThreadX is taking uh, with our platform approach uh, to uh, credential stuffing. Uh, so ThreadX is ultimately a next generation WAF or sometimes people are using the WAP, Web Application and API Protection. Uh, but our platform approach takes traditional uh, application protection, uh, WAF uh, application protection, as well as the API capabilities uh, and to be able to protect those layered on top with DDoS and bot uh, mitigation. Uh, so those four pillars are allowing us to have ultimately a view of the world uh, that most people aren't able to do, even if they have uh, best of breed in terms of a uh, bot, DDoS and WAF, because it's so difficult to be able to correlate uh, and ultimately visualize what the attackers are doing. Um, so the platform approach is really something that's working really well for us and for our clients. And layered on top of all of that is a SOC as a service uh, with layer seven experts uh, manning the gl uh, glass 24 by seven. So giving our clients uh, a different, uh, an additional level of protection 
uh, that a lot of the traditional WAFs uh, who don't offer SOC as a service. So when you look at credential stuffing, Brett, uh, and you look at the ThreadX platform, uh, can you kind of expand a little bit more in a little more detail and more technical detail as to why uh, the ThreadX approach is advantageous for our clients? Yeah, I think it starts right at the beginning in the fact that it's, it's not static rules and uh, static signatures. Uh, we're actually taking a more holistic view of all attack vectors that are coming in and we're looking at it over time. And so it's a combination of constantly correlating any indicators of suspicious behaviors back to an attacker so that we can put it in context over time and then be able to use kind of the, the combination of visibility that we're providing to identify, you know, what are they doing? What are they going to do next? And how do we properly block them moving forward? And, you know, so first and foremost, it's a switch kind of in the, in the dynamic of looking at it from an attacker specific perspective and constantly correlating, constantly learning, constantly building that bigger, broader picture of what you're doing. And then when you talk about some of the techniques and tools that we're using, I mean, we, we have very advanced uh, TLS and user agent fingerprinting, uh, and which is part of our overall solution. Again, a piece of this is sometimes those things can be spoofed, but how do you actually collect the information, provide the right hashing so that they can't spoof it, and how you continually poke and prod and build that viewpoint of who's on the other end of uh, the line, not necessarily all at once, but certainly over time. We use a combination of application uh, behavior uh, components where we're looking at you know, the traditional things, the normal inputs, outputs, field links, field sizes, but moving a step beyond in terms of how is the application behaving? Are we seeing certain indicators that, while maybe not a static signature, certainly are indicators of some level of suspicious activity that's flowing through? Mm. I mentioned before the attacker profiling. So constantly pulling both more of information about who's on the other end, but also what are all the behaviors and techniques that we're seeing them use? What are they targeting? How are they progressing through their attack posture? Each of those, again, helps us build a more complete picture uh, and you know, determine the appropriate response. Active interrogation is one of those responses. So depending on where they are and how deep uh, they're getting into it, maybe we're gonna tar pit, maybe we're gonna actually you know, do some active deception, maybe we're gonna get a little bit more aggressive in some of the fingerprinting techniques that we're using. And again, all of these are pieces and parts. When you add that in then to some of the more traditional things that you would do in credential stuffing, geo-blocking, um, other components, you start to build the right picture. We have other capabilities, uh, anonymizer tracking. So let's take away those VPNs, those cheaper IPs, those proxies. Uh, how about the ability to pattern the behavior over time as it relates to business logic? So maybe don't allow them to go after those APIs unless we have validated that they've actually come in through the login component from the application. How do we identify other kind of uh, indicators of programmatic access? Are they rotating specific uh, components in a you know, somewhat programmatic style or somewhat way? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's just you know, picking up the additional hygiene components. A lot of times these guys are moving very quick. They're morphing very quick. And so they leave little breadcrumb trails, such as, you know, they forget to clean up the user agent information. Maybe there's header details, maybe there's other components. Bottom line is our whole approach is about moving beyond just looking at a single request, trying to match that with some known behavior, and then making a binary decision on how to respond. It is a combined approach of constantly building more and more info about, you know, the suspicious behaviors we're identifying and when and how do we block and then how do we identify that pattern so that each and every time they come back, we are immediately ready to identify some component of that attack and then more quickly respond with the right uh, actions. Last thing though, at the end of the day, guys, I mean, the tech is cool. I say that all the time. I was a founder of the company, so I want everybody to think the tech is just outstanding, but sometimes human set of eyes, the experience base of folks who are seeing a lot of this type of activity especially when they can crowdsource these type of attacks across multiple customers. So that kind of, you know, AppSec as a service component that we layer on top of this great technology, that in and, in and of uh, itself is, is, you know, a significant portion of the value prop because these guys are seeing it. They are able to bring kind of the best of breed solutions to, to bear 
uh, based on what we're seeing across our entire customer base. So. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great uh, way to summarize the, the, the final benefit. Uh, talking to our clients, uh, I continuously get uh, that they, they love the tech and they also love the AppSec as a service uh, because let's face it, there just aren't enough people, even, even for those lucky enough to have unlimited budgets and, and we know, you know nobody has an unlimited budget, but even when they have unlimited budget, they just can't find the talent. Uh, and they love that combination of excellent tech and a super talented uh, AppSec as a service. So it's a great combination. Uh, so I wanna thank everybody uh, for, for joining us today. Uh, just a quickly review, we've talked about uh, credential stuffing and what's going on in the market that's allowing uh, credential stuffing to really evolve and evolve at a pace uh, that's only accelerating, making things more difficult and more sophisticated. And, and a lot of the traditional approaches that are out there to try to block uh, credential stuffing uh, aren't working. Uh, Brett and I have seen that uh, evolve over the last uh, 10 months, 12 months. So it's, it's only gonna continue to accelerate. And we hope uh, you took a couple of uh, new ideas of things you can do differently today to help protect your organization. Um, as, as we finalize, as I kind of final summary here is that ThreadX is a platform uh, that allows for uh, web application, API protection, bot management, and DDoS all on a single platform. Uh, that single platform approach is paying dividends for our clients because we're, be, we're able to correlate and visualize in ways that just aren't, uh, aren't really available to clients that have individual uh, point solutions or maybe you're deficient in some of these areas. So uh, thank you again for joining the webinar for additional information, excuse me, for additional information, uh, please visit our website, threadx.com or send us an email at info at threadx.com. Thank you and have a great day.